Open the cabinet doors. Take off the ground wire. Release pressure in the pump to lower the table. Remove the top adapter if present and remove the DPF. At this point, you may run the vacuum of the DPF cleaner to clean up any additional ash and soot. The adapter rings should fit the appropriate DPF. The seal on the bottom ring should contact the corresponding flange on the DPF. Improper seal fit results in soot and ash leakage during the cleaning process. Inspect the condition of the seal every time you use an adapter. When you get a message following the vacuum cleaner filter tests to replace your vacuum filter, follow these steps. Shut off the machine. Unplug the power cord. Open the door to the vacuum cleaner cabinet. Grasp the handle on top of the vacuum and lift it out of the cabinet. Disconnect the vacuum cleaner's power cord and vacuum hose. Unhook the three rubber latches holding the vacuum motor to the filter pail and lift the motor off the pail. Open the latch on the connecting band and remove it from the old filter pail. Assemble the connecting band to the new filter pail. Assemble the motor, vacuum hose, and power cord to the new filter. Place the vacuum back into the cabinet with the vacuum hose connection positioned toward the front of the unit. Close the door. Dispose of the sealed filter pail according to local, state, and federal regulations. When you purchase the new vacuum filter, it was shipped with a filter cover. Remove the cover from the box and, using a soft hammer, tap the cover onto the old filter pail. Once a month, you must drain the air tank on the DPF cleaner of accumulated water. Turn off the DPF to depressurize it and unplug it from its power source. Place a shop towel or shallow pan under the air tank's drain plug. While holding the pipe coupling, remove the drain plug and let the water drain out. Install and tighten the drain plug into the air tank pipe fitting and dispose of the water. The HEPA filter should be inspected annually. To inspect the filter, it must be removed from the machine and the bottom of the filter needs to be visually inspected. The filter should be replaced if it has become dirty and restricts airflow. Remove the nut from each corner of the HEPA filter. Lift the two Z-shaped brackets off the HEPA filter. Replace the existing filter with a new HEPA filter, gasket side down. Install the Z-shaped brackets and nuts. The desiccant is visible through the clear desiccant filter bowl. It contains color indicator beads that change from blue, dry, to pink, wet. Pink indicates the desiccant must be regenerated or replaced. Shut off the airflow to the air filter dryer and depressurize the system. Shut off the machine and remove the power cord from the outlet. Remove the bowl from the dryer housing by depressing the locking tab and rotating the locking ring counterclockwise until the bowl can be pulled downward. Discard or regenerate the used desiccant. Pour new or dried desiccant into the bowl filling it to within one half inch of the top of the bowl. Do not allow desiccant to enter the center tube. Reinstall the bowl on the housing and secure it in place. Used pink desiccant may be recycled for longer use by heating it in an oven until the blue color returns. Preheat an oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius. Pour the used pink desiccant into a flat pan. Heat the pan of desiccant in the oven for three hours or until the desiccant's color has changed from pink to blue. Remove the desiccant from the oven and allow it to cool down to room temperature. The coalescing filter removes oil from the compressed air, preventing the oil from coating the desiccant 
and hampering its ability to dry the air. The service indicator on the coalescing filter turns red when it needs to be replaced. Filter elements cannot be cleaned, they must be replaced. Shut off the machine and remove the power cord from the outlet. Shut off airflow to the air filter dryer and depressurize the cleaner. Remove the bowl guard assembly from the coalescing filter housing by pushing the bowl toward the housing body, rotating the bowl counterclockwise, and then pull the bowl down. Use a clean cloth to clean the bowl. Inspect the bowl for damage. Grasp the bottom of the used filter element and turn it clockwise to remove it. Install the new filter element, being careful to seat the O-ring in the groove. Reinstall the bowl on the housing by pushing it into the housing and turning the bowl to catch the locking tabs under the retainers. After cleaning many DPFs, back pressure in the ash collection tank will increase and trigger an automatic reverse cleaning process for the internal cartridge filters. Small air bursts will pass backward through the cartridge filters and remove ash from the filter, prolonging cartridge life. The message, reverse cleaning, is displayed while this process takes place. After the reverse cleaning is complete, the normal DPF cleaning process resumes. At some point, the reverse cleaning process won't be successful and the cartridge filters will need to be replaced. The internal filters bad message displays when this occurs. To replace the filter cartridge, follow these steps. Shut off the machine and unplug it. Unlock and remove the cover to the upper cartridge filter. Use the cinch strap to securely attach a bag to the collar of the cartridge chamber. Pull the used filter out of the dust collector and into the bag. Twist the top of the bag and secure it with the cable tie provided. Release the cinch strap from the collar. Repeat steps 1 through 5 for the lower cartridge filter. Reconnect the power and turn on the DPF cleaner. Select Vacuum from the main menu. Vacuum out the cartridge door area and inside the cabinet. Install the new filters in the dust collector with the gasket end inserted first. Install the filter covers and lock them in place. Dispose of the used filters according to local, state and federal laws regarding hazardous waste. If software is updated, you will automatically be sent a new SD card and instructions for loading onto your machine. Your warranty registration will help us to ensure that you receive updates. Basic troubleshooting guidelines are included in your user's manual. For more in-depth troubleshooting measures, please see your service center or call this number, 800-533-6127, or go to our website, otctools.com slash tech support. <laughs>